Welcome back to another Euro Fantasy video and podcast. This will be the best budget players. I'll be highlighting 11 today, so a top 10 and an honourable mention to kind of form a starting 11 of sorts. And I'll be doing this for each position. Best goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders and forwards. If you smash the like button and subscribe for new and get this over 200 to show you want to see more Euro Fantasy football content on the channel. Also potentially players to avoid. And I know there's going to be a lot of 4 million budget enablers that will be a omitted from this video and podcast but if you check out my predicted lineups you will see all the budget options who are likely to start in Euro 2024 for all 24 teams so be sure to check that out as well it's a very extensive video and podcast but it will also go a long way to helping you gain a lot of insight into this tournament and all the countries involved but without further ado let's jump straight into this one I will sort this out by position and start off with a goalkeeper here in Verbruggen, the number one for the Netherlands with two decent games against Poland and Austria. We've got France in between in match day two. He's only 4.5 million and you will have even cheaper goalkeepers who could start like Pence from Austria. But Verbruggen is 4.5 million. He's a cheap option and a nice alternative to the more expensive picks like Donnarumma, Magnan, Diogo Costa and Pickford. And to be fair, the latter two are only 5 million. So there's not much of a difference between Verbruggen and those two. But I do think in terms of 4.5 million goalkeepers, Verbruggen is right up there with the very best. There's only one other goalkeeper that could potentially usurp him as the definitive best budget option in this position. Verbruggen's ownership is 4%. He's only played six games for the Netherlands, but he's kept four clean sheets in that time, conceding four goals. And for Brighton in the 2023-24 season, he kept seven clean sheets. He's a young goalkeeper with some potential. He's very good with his distribution and he can make some good saves as well. So I think Verbruggen is right up there in terms of the best 4.5 million goalkeepers in the game. Lunen had a great season for Real Madrid, keeping 12 clean sheets and helping them win the Champions League. He was very unlucky to miss out in the Champions League final and he did have an illness in the build-up to that game. But even weeks before, it was widely reported that Courtois would start that Champions League final. So it came as no surprise when we covered UCL Fantasy in match day 13. And Trubin was the number one goalkeeper for Ukraine, but Lunin has made that number one spot his own now. And in 11 games for Ukraine, he has kept five clean sheets, conceding eight goals. And he's one of the most popular options in the goalkeeper position with 18% ownership. And that 4.5 million price tag makes him very accessible and a very good option for the first two match days against Romania and Slovakia. If you are using the wild card or limitless in match day three, I'd recommend going away from Lunin. But for the first two match days, I think he's a very good option indeed and perhaps the best budget option in the goalkeeper position and of course there will be some 5 million options who would really pique my interest but if you are looking for cheaper alternatives Lunin is definitely one you should be looking at and I would have no concerns whatsoever about him being dropped it won't be another Champions League final situation going on again Lunin is the undisputed number one now for Ukraine despite how good Trubin has been for them as well and I'd probably rank Lunin as the best 4.5 million goalkeeper in the game. It looks like Castiles will start in goal for Belgium so the sales 4 million dream is over but you do have Weltfest from Leicester who is a 4 million defender and with 8% ownership and yes minimal goal threat to be fair but the ball recoveries and clean sheets are certainly possible facing Slovakia, Romania and Ukraine all favourable fixtures for Belgium in my opinion. He scored twice for Leicester in 46 appearances this season. He's only got one assist though for Belgium in 14 appearances and in recent games he has started the vast majority to them and I do think he will be in the starting 11 for the Euros tournament and in terms of 4 million defenders if it wasn't for a certain left back from the host nation I think Wout Fass would be the best budget defender in the game but you're still covering one of the best teams maybe not defensively but one of the best teams in this competition by going for Wout Fass for just 4 million I think that's an absolute bargain and let's wait and see because there is a possibility that he does drop to the bench and be sure to check out my predicted lineups to see which players will pose a threat to Wout Face and also the other 4 million defenders you have at your disposal like Kasia from Georgia who makes so many ball recoveries he averages 6.8 per game whilst you might not get that with Wout Fass, he will get a lot more clean sheets if he does start and I think that will be the case so I would go for Wout Fass as your 4 million defender. However, there is a certain middle stat 
at the left back position for Germany, who will probably start all of the games there for the national team. And you do have David Raum knocking on the door. He was the previous left back. And in the recent friendly that Germany played, it was a 2 1 win over Greece. Mintelstadt played the first half and was subbed off for David Raum. So that could be an issue going forwards. You could see Mittelstadt being subbed off early, which can pay off if he's subbed off around 60 minutes and Germany haven't conceded at that point. But there is that possibility of him being subbed off before 60 minutes and only giving you a one-pointer and maybe being benched in certain occasions. I wouldn't rule that out definitively, but I think Mittelstadt will be the number one left back for Germany and the fixtures are quite favourable overall. I still think Hungary, Scotland and Switzerland can cause Germany problems, but in just three appearances for the Germans, he has one goal, no assists, but in the 2023-24 season, he helped Stuttgart finish second in the Bundesliga over Bayern Munich with seven goals and assists combined. His ownership is 16%, so he's a very popular option. And by the time we get to match day one, and if he's in the starting lineup during the deadline stream, he'll probably go up to over 20% ownership as well. So if he is in the starting 11 against Scotland, I would recommend Mittelstadt as the best 4 million option in the defence. Another budget defender from Germany is Jonathan Tarr. He has started nine consecutive games for the national team and apart from being more nailed on than Mittelstadt and we know for sure he's going to start the other thing that maybe justifies the extra half a million is the ball recoveries that's something that Jonathan Tarr could have over most defenders in the game and if he keeps a clean sheet and gets a few ball recovery points you could be looking at massive hauls there now he's not known for his goal or assist potential he hasn't even scored or assisted for the national team yet but he has scored six times for Bayer Leverkusen in a historic season where where they won the Bundesliga and the German Cup and also reached the Europa League final, falling short against Atalanta. They were battered in that final, but they were so close to perfection throughout the entire season. And Jonathan Tarr could still offer great value at 4.5 million. I'd currently favour Mittelstadt if I'm picking between the two and we see both of them in the starting 11. But don't rule out Jonathan Tarr, who offers even better value than Antonio Rudiger. With Harry Maguire being dropped from the England squad due to injury, Mark Gay is well poised to be the starting centre-back alongside John Stones for the Euros for the entire tournament. And at 4.5 million to cover England offensively, that is just great value on paper. And I think Gay could get a lot of ball recovery points as well. A bit like Jonathan Tarr, there isn't much goal for it. And in fact, he has even less. Only one assist for Crystal Palace this season. No goals or assists in 10 appearances for England. And he marked that 10th appearance in that 1-0 loss against Iceland. And he had an injury scare towards the end of the game. So let's keep an eye out for that. Because if Gay is also out... You could have Lewis Dunk being the starting centre-back for England at just 4 million. So it's between those two for that remaining centre-back slot alongside John Stones. And I think Mark Gay is more likely to take that at the moment. He had a good season for Crystal Palace. He's had a fair few injury problems, but overall, hopefully he's fine and fully fit and available for match day one. I believe that will be the case. Facing Serbia, Denmark and Slovenia, you could see one or two clean sheets. But as I mentioned in the predicted lineups video, Slovenia are no slouches. They've won eight of the last 10 games and England are in poor form with only one victory out of the last five matches. So I don't think it's a walk in the park for England, despite the fact that on paper they should be topping the group. It's still going to be a tough one. They have to turn up and play their best football to get the results and progress to the round of 16. After seeing or hearing this name, and yes, it's Pierre-Emil Hoiberg who is recommended in the best budget players. You might be clicking off, logging off, unsubscribing, all of that stuff. I did mention him in my first draft and a lot of people did question that selection, but he has scored in two consecutive games for Denmark with nine goals and 10 assists overall in 76 appearances. He hasn't scored or assisted for Tottenham this season and his ownership is only 1% and there's probably good reason for that. But I think on the international stage, Hoiberg can offer very very good value and ball recoveries is a big factor and he has been a good option in Sky Fantasy Football in the past and also UCL Fantasy a couple of years ago where he'd get four or five points on average so it's just something to think about it's a mega differential who's very cheap it's a low risk and I'd say a decent reward and he can offer you that consistency in the heart of the midfield. The fixtures are relatively decent for Denmark who would be expected to qualify in second place but it will be tough between them, Serbia and Slovenia on paper. But in Denmark you've got a few decent midfielders like Delaney and also Christian Eriksen who I'll talk about in future videos and podcasts but 
Hoiberg offers potentially the best value of any Denmark player across all areas of the pitch. This is pushing it in terms of budget. So the way I classify it is goalkeepers and defenders would be 4 to 4.5 million to be a budget option. And midfielders and forwards are between 4.5 to 6.5 million. And Hakan Kalanoglu is still one of the best cheaper alternatives in the midfield. He's not going to be the best goal scorer or assister, but he can get a combination of both alongside ball recoveries and player of the match awards. And remember for every three ball recoveries, your player gains a point and it has to be an outfield player. And if your player is awarded player of the match, they will get three additional points to their base score and Kalinoglu's ownership is 6% and in 85 games for Turkey he has registered 18 goals and 15 assists and also 18 goals and assists for Inter Milan this season. He is facing Georgia in match day one so I like him a lot to start this Euros tournament. In match day two though if you're using the wild card or limitless I wouldn't go for Kalinoglu or any Turkey player to be honest. Then you have Czech Republic in match day three which is arguably evenly matched but Turkey could be the dark horses this time round. We all spoke about it in Euro 2020. It didn't happen. They had an awful tournament. Maybe now when the spotlight isn't on them, Turkey will fulfill that role and be a very underrated team in the Euros. This is a template option and Rodri isn't the best goal scorer or assist in the world either, but he does have the ball recoveries in him and recently he is scoring a lot more goals for Man City and even for Spain where he scored a brace against Brazil in a 3-3 draw. So I think he could start to ramp up the goals and assists for the international team and in just 49 appearances he has scored three times and assisted twice and for Man City 23 goals and assists combined from a defensive midfield role. So that goes to show how good of a player Rodri is in all areas of the pitch. In my opinion, he's the best midfielder in the world right now. His ownership is 25% and he's got a very tough group. That's what kind of puts me off a little bit, but he can still get three or four points in the first two match days and potentially a very high score against Albania, who will be targeted by Spain, Croatia and Italy in this group, which is arguably the toughest one of the lot. The forgotten man, Jordan Shakiri, who scored a winner against the Republic of Ireland back in March in a 1-0 win for Switzerland, and he also scored a penalty in a recent friendly. So Shakiri has a lot to offer still in this Euros tournament. It might well be his last on the international stage, either World Cups or Euros, and he could go out with a bang. He's got a very good record for the national team. 31 goals and 34 assists in 122 appearances. His ownership is 2%. This is a massive differential we're talking about and the first two match days look quite promising on paper against Hungary and Scotland and I have to stress I think Hungary are a very underrated team so I'm not underestimating them in particular but I still think Switzerland would be the favourites in this matchup and Shakiri can score or assist even if Switzerland end up losing or drawing that game so at 6.5 million despite having a pretty torrid season you could argue in just around 12 appearances only three goals and assists combined but Shakiri has done it for Switzerland so many times already and even in recent games so I would go for Shakiri as a 6.5 million midfielder. The 11th and final player covered in today's video is Yamal, the only forward who's also covered. And once again, I encourage you to check out my predicted lineups video and podcast because every single budget option who is likely to start is covered there. And you'll be able to see some 4 million bargains from even the weakest team, so to speak. And Kasia from Georgia is certainly one of them. But Yamal at 6.5 million could offer tremendous value. In just six games for Spain, he has two goals and two assists. The sky is certainly the limit for this player. He has so much potential and he is facing Croatia and Italy in the first two match days. So my recommendation is to probably go for him in match day three. And that's where he could be a massive differential even if you're using the limitless in match day three and you are kind of tempted to go for the most expensive options, consider a Yamal who's very cheap and affordable on any chip strategy. And no matter what you're doing, using a limitless or wildcard or just using free transfers, I think he could be perfect for match day three. And to be honest, I wouldn't rule him out from scoring or assisting against Croatia or Italy either. For Barcelona, he got 17 goals and assists combined, which is incredible for his age and the minutes he has played. And he's only going to get better every single season. Of course, some players peak early. I don't think that'll be the case for Yamal, who has a very bright future indeed. 11 players is quite significant in terms of numbers, but of course there are so many budget players to choose from in Euro Fantasy that 
11 maybe doesn't quite cut it. And for example, right now, friendlies are going on and Hungary are 3-0 up at the moment against Israel and Varga scored twice. And he also assisted in the first half. And he's someone I mentioned a lot in the predicted lineups when mentioning the best options from Hungary. I still think Shaboslai, for example, is the best player from Hungary, but I think Varga could be one of the best budget options as well. So you could argue he should have made this list too. So let me know if there are any other players that you think definitely deserve a mention. You've got Jorginho, so many players, trust me. And the predicted lineups is where every single player is covered for Euro 2024. If you enjoyed this video or found useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 24,000 subscribers and beyond. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM, and check all the other links in the description below for my Patreon, the Championships Discord server, Euro Fantasy League Draft Town, as well as Spotify and everything else that's there, really. I'd really appreciate it. And it goes a long way to supporting the channel, leaving a five-star review on my podcast and follow me on Spotify, for example. And you can join the Euro Fantasy League, as I mentioned earlier. The league code is JCRHJQ and there is an auto-join link in the description below. Take care, enjoy the football. I wish you all the best of luck for match day one and the rest of the tournament. And I'll see you next time.